The BBC test card is something all of us here in the United Kingdom are intimately familiar with. The image speaks to us despite its lack of sound and moves us despite its lack of motion. It is one of the most instantly recognisable pieces of content ever put on the air by the British Broadcasting Corporation. Even today's young folk will have seen it, perhaps whilst chilling on a Netflix. The test card manages to still play a part in the culture, most often as a comedic and or narrative device. These cards, burned into our brains by cathode ray tubes, would become the framework on which our wider understanding of the test card reference, or metagag, is hung. It seems we just can't get enough, forever referencing these static images from the olden days of television in video games, movies, awful internet videos, and of course, telly shows. I'm doing a test card for the B, uh, for, not for BBC, for the Channel M, like the BBC. <laughs> Our own version of this pop cultural zeitgeist spans over 70 years of broadcasting from the big British corporation and its contemporaries. First broadcast in the 1940s, the test cards would be beamed to our screens, albeit with increasing rarity, until being officially retired by the BBC in 2013. However, the test card would just not quit, settling for nothing less than pop cultural godhood. And in this video, we are going to celebrate that by taking a look at its transmedia influence and discussing what the little bugger is actually for. Join me, won't you? A young and rebellious would be among the first to assail the fourth wall by bringing the much-loved test card F to life in a sketch for the TV parody show End of Part 1 in 1979. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Oh dear, I knew I'd get that wrong. I just dried them. What, what should it have been again? No, it should have been. Come and get this thing. Oh, dear, Moving, will you? Sorry, 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 The little girl from the test card, Carol Hersey, would go on to become an icon in her own right, reprising her role as test card girl on multiple TV shows, despite a tumultuous relationship with the fame her father, BBC engineer George Hersey, would thrust upon her. For a more extensive look at her life and career, be sure to check out Prentice Hancock's meticulously researched documentary, Carol Hersey, The Girl in the Test Card, over at mindfulof.tech forward slash Hersey, or in the show notes below. We can even find test card creepypasta deep in the web pages of the Scarfoot blog. According to reports, old Chattox would appear in place of Carol if you were foolish enough to leave your set on late at night. Her eyes would search the room, bringing doom upon those to which she turned her gaze. I highly recommend reading the rest of the story and experiencing the alternate reality of Scarfuck for yourself, by the way, so type on over to mindfulof.tech forward slash Scarfuck or check links in the show notes. With these examples and countless more over decades of visual media production, I doubt you disagree the little test card that could is a full-blown cultural phenomenon. A national treasure still getting regular cameos. Carol Hersey's smiling image, her self-made clown and the technical toolset of test card F through X are deeply etched into the collective consciousness of the British hive mind. The format has even transcended the original media on which it was contained and has become a template for creative expression. It is now and has almost always been a meme. But what was it actually for? To most folk, the card was the broadcast television equivalent of a closed sign, a TV BRB, indicating the channel was not currently broadcasting any programmes. 
Early TV channels would not have anything to play during the daytime or late at night, so needed something to display during this downtime. Stock videos such as the Potter's Wheel were often broadcast during this time as well. Eventually, video recording technology would advance enough to enable non-stop broadcasts, with scheduled programming seamlessly mixing live shows with pre-records and repeats. Of course, this would mean less screen time for the poor test card, only being allowed into people's homes during scheduled maintenance or when a disaster would force a channel off air. The cards have a lot more to offer than a simple on-off indicator, however, with even the earliest examples providing assistance with the calibration of your televisual receiver. The first ever test signal was two simple shapes, designed to allow easy reference when those early adopters needed to adjust the horizontal and vertical hold of their shiny new television sets. The cards evolved with television, as we transitioned from black and white cathode ray tubes to HD ready plasmas, LCDs and LEDs, our test cards came too, adding new elements and changing the old along the way. Shortly we will take a brief tour of the final BBC test card, which contains all the classic elements with an HD flavoured twist. Before we dive into my presentation proper, it should be noted that my understanding is minimal and my approach slipshod. Don't worry though, I have some recommended reading at the end. The border arrowheads on all four sides allow the user to see the overscan and adjust the width, height and centering accordingly. We also have a cross in the noughts and crosses game which just so happens to be the absolute centre of the image. The grayscale bars here and at the bottom of the screen show how contrast and brightness should be set. The frequency gratings show a range of frequencies which were much more relevant in the days of CRT and manual tuning, but still allows us to test and adjust the sharpness and or focus. The convergence lines we see all over the grid pattern, providing different weights of lines, give us a good reference for a range of adjustments including white balance and, you guessed it, sharpness. The letterbox also aids us in checking frequency response, but like the gratings, is largely obsolete in the modern era. The corner stripes are another relic of CRT, with the edges of such screens being more likely to be out of focus than the centre. The colour bars all round the screen edge provide reference colours for easy adjustment of different colour related settings. Carol Hersey, herself, was used as a skin tone reference to ensure we were looking at realistic humans on our tellies, provided they are the colour of a Caucasian child, of course. Finally, we have Bubbles the Clown. His clothes were not originally green, but were changed to ensure the whole RGB family of red, green and blue were fully represented in the photograph. And that is just a few components of the card. Every element we mentioned, and the other bits and pieces we didn't, can be used to test certain aspects of image and signal quality. Some can even be used in multiple ways to test multiple things. In the days of CRT TVs, many of these adjustments would require opening up your television set and fiddling with the adjustment pots hidden inside the case. This was a dangerous game due to the extremely high voltages involved, so calling out your friendly local repair person would almost certainly be a better idea than risking your life in pursuit of a clearer picture. Today, almost all of the adjustments your TV can make are exposed somewhere in a menu, though a few may still be hidden behind secret service codes probably as a last ditch attempt at keeping that TV repair person in business. All RCA factory service, there's a branch in most cities and you can depend on RCA factory service, ask one of your neighbors or ask any friend. Your TV troubles are bothering you and your little family's unhappy and blue, call on the boys who know just what to do. Call RCA factory service. RCA Factory Service is available only to owners of RCA Victor Television. If you are familiar with calibrating your own TV using calibration tools or videos, you will have most likely seen all of the elements on our good old test card in some form or another. For more technical information about the classic test card and how to use it, head on over to the Vintage Electronics blog and forum at mindfulof.tech forward slash test. And for an in-depth look at the history of the BBC's test cards through the ages, take a look at the MHP test card gallery at mindfulof.tech forward slash card. So there we have it. The test, the card, the legend. A racial memory passed down from our ancestors at the dawn of Big British telly. A simple card broadcast to a nation that transcended its roots as an engineering practicality and gave a little girl more screen time than any other human being in the UK a proto-meme that ascended into the pop-cultural consciousness to be forever transmitted as the de facto shorthand for telly 
in any visual medium. Thank you for watching. Please like if you did, subscribe if you haven't, or hit the hate button if you want to be like that. And of course, if you have something to say, drop a comment below. This is Nuge, the Mindful Tech Head, done for the day. Goodbye, and be well.